Sure, we could sit and think about how messed up the world is and how every waking moment of human existence involves some pain, or, and hear me out here, we could just do some tech news. Yeah? Ah, what do you say, James? Can there be a campfire? No. It's dangerous, this paper. Intel unveiled its second generation neuromorphic chip yesterday, the Loihi 2, which is about 10 times faster than its predecessor. Neuromorphic, James, do you know what that means? I can guess. Brains. Change. In the chip. Okay. Of course, Intel isn't the only one making processors inspired by human brains. These days, they're found in all sorts of devices, including flagship smartphones. But Intel's new chip is special because it's one of the first to use the company's Intel 4 process with extreme ultraviolet, or EUV, lithography, something that almost every other chip manufacturer has been using for some time. But now Intel's doing it, and like, you still clap for the last kid across the finish line on track and field day, they you know? They do great. Yeah, it's like, you, 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 you made it, and that's what counts. Now, the Low Ehe 2 isn't going to go in your gaming PC. It's designed for researchers. And to make their job a bit easier, Intel has also released an open source software framework called Lava. So hopefully those sciencey people can make our electronics a bit smarter without burning themselves. <laughs> it's all very Hawaiian sounding. Yeah, well it is, it's a volcano, which is why the lava- Thank you. I could have worked that in. PC enthusiasts have been chomping at the bit to catch a glimpse of the rumored graphics card collaboration between Asus and Noctua, and now images of the fabled card have appeared online. They were spotted in a Facebook post by the Vietnamese branch of Asus, and yep, it's a uh, it's an RTX 3070 with, with brown fans. You excited? You, you guys like this? I it's, love it. It's brown. It won't look good next to anything. <laughs> it's, it's tan. I will say it is a thick boy. It looks like it'll take up a full four PCIe expansion slots. But if Noctua's CPU coolers are anything to go by, we could expect this thing to be hiding some big old heat pipes under that cooler and fans that run as quietly as physically possible. Because GPUs should be seen, not heard. Like Back my, in your cage. <laughs> like my parents told me. <laughs> I didn't see any Strix branding on there, but if they don't end up using that, it's a bit of a shame. That's one of Asus's gaming brands. It's got an owl mascot. You seen it? No. Noctua uses an owl too. They love owls. So who knows when this thing is coming out, and more importantly, who cares? Because it'll be way too expensive and you won't be able to get it. <laughs> Keep watching our videos though. <laughs> and Facebook is still dealing with the fallout of a slew of Wall Street Journal reports covering the company's research into the effects of Instagram on teens. Facebook's head of safety, Antigone Davis, that's a name, huh? Nice. It's fun. But she was grilled by members of Congress yesterday and was asked by Senator Blumenthal if Facebook would commit to ending Finsta. Will you commit to ending Finsta? Leading to many OK Boomer reactions before the senator clearly explained that he knew what Finsta was. It's short for fake Instagram and is a term for kids' secret secondary accounts. Facebook may not be able to do anything about Finstas without adopting the kind of ID verification seen in China, and I don't think we want that. But what they can do, and what they did, is publish heavily annotated slides from the studies the WSJ reported on in an attempt to show everyone what they really say. You didn't see the real ones. These are the, these are the ones that are most important. Sure, use of their platforms was correlated with lower well-being, but that's not causation. That's it's basic science. We should listen to Facebook here, the bastion of rationality and logic. more connectedness. That's how you we do it. We need each other. <laughs> yeah, cooperation, guys. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Honey, the free shopping tool that finds the best promo codes on lots of your favorite stores, whether you're shopping for shoes, video games, tools, or out-of-stock computer parts. All you have to do is click Apply Coupons while you're at the checkout page and wait for Honey to search for the best working coupons. That sounds pretty easy. Honey gets a small commission from sites where Honey saves you money, which means it's free for you to use and installs in just two clicks. So get Honey for free right now at joinhoney.com slash techlinked or click the link below. Quick bits, give them a try. And if they're too quick, well, you'll just have to speed up. The USB implementers forum continues to not understand how to name things good. They just released the spec for USB Power Delivery 3.1, which will enable Type-C cables that support charging at up to 240 watts. To make this nice and simple, they released a table with seven different logos and labels so customers can simply look at a cable's packaging and easily understand what it's capable of after only a few minutes of Googling. Pre-orders for the modular and easily repairable Fairphone 4, much anticipated by tech enthusiasts, have finally launched with a base model going for 579 euros or 671 US dollars. And it's too bad that US price doesn't actually matter at all because this Fairphone is only launching in Europe and the UK. 
I can only imagine it's because the launch of a phone that might reduce waste and protect the environment would be met with heavy protests all across the greatest country in the world. It's hey, American. don't be mad. Look, we, I don't make fun of America that much on this show. Give me this one. Corsair has launched their first gaming monitor, the Xenion 32 QHD165, because you want to grab potential customers with a real catchy name. It's a 32 inch 2560 by 1440p IPS monitor with a 165 hertz refresh rate. We haven't had nearly enough monitors that make this kind of compromise between resolution and speed, so I definitely would be more excited if it didn't remind me of Intel's workstation processors. Xenion? Stupid. It's, come of on. all the names. There's so many names names, like, we could list them. Enreal has launched their latest smart glasses that actually look like something a normal person would want to buy for once. The Enreal Air does not have any cameras, unlike Facebook's recent collab with Ray-Ban, but it does have little 90 hertz screens in the lenses that can apparently project a virtual 130 inch screen. I bet watching movies on this thing is something someone want on Earth wants to do. They probably exist somewhere. And in an attempt to avoid paying the EU's $5 billion antitrust fine, Google argued that the most searched term on one of their biggest search competitors, Bing, was actually Google. Proving that if they do have a monopoly, it's through no fault of their own. That information comes from SEO company Arefs, and I mean, I mean, it does make sense. I'm not, if I'm going on Bing, that's what I'm doing. But it's also- We only have an monopoly because we're the best. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Microsoft keeps forcing Bing into everything like a, like a pushy parent. Like maybe Bing doesn't want to grow up to be a search engine. I don't know, Microsoft, maybe ask Bing how Bing feels for once. I don't know, this episode feels like it's over. So come back on Monday for more tech news. It will distract from the pain for a little while. <laughs> <laughs>